and uh, welcome to the first of the many episodes there's going to be on how to play like Peter Green. The reason I'm doing it in parts is um, to teach everything about Peter Green, the way he played, different, I mean, to do all that in one part it would probably take an hour, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to break it down into kind of little chunks and I'll kind of maybe upload one like every so, like every so like every like two weeks or so, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so this will be the first one and what we're going to talk, what we're going to talk about in this one is just kind of the basics really of soloing. I will go into kind of like um, more detail in like diff uh, other videos and whatnot, but uh, I'm just going to kind of get get started, so get you started off, so to say, and kind of get the idea of how to play like Mr. Peter Green. So, what's first we're going to talk about is tone, uh, the kind of sound what I go for. So, let's start there. Okay, so let's talk about Peter Green's tone. Um, early days used Marshall J1045s in the Blues Breakers live, but I've seen him use a Vox bass rig for that as well, so I think it was like whatever he could get his hands on he would use. Uh, then in the early days of Floyd Mac he used Orange, and then he went to Fenders, I've seen him use a Bandmaster, he used a Showman, there were a Reverb Tank, you see a picture of him plugged into combos. But um, his sound never changed, and that's the important thing to kind of note, is his sound was always Peter Green. And uh, uh, to kind of get that sound, it's kind of really... Definitively a Les Paul uh, with a classic kind of kind of crunch over overdrive sound. It's not a distortion. It's it's more of a warm overdrive. You didn't really have a lot of gain, really. So you kind of want to be going for you know anything with a humbucker in the neck and in the bridge. You're kind of okay with, but you know the Les Paul is is the way to go really to kind of get that full Peter Green vibe. It makes you play more like him if you've got a guitar that he kind of feels like the one he used kind of thing. And he's renowned obviously for his 59. Um, so uh, so the sound you'll be kind of going for is a really nice, rich, warm sound that's uh, again very really touch sensitive. Like I talked about in the uh, All Right Now videos. Kind of like um, if you've got like um, full distortion. <laughs> Uh, the easier that that's more you dig in, the more distorted you get, the lighter you play, the less it will. It's more of a delicate kind of sound, and you won't be able to, you know, manipulate your volume control to get different kind of different kind of tones. So that's the kind of sound you will be going for, and uh, it's quite um, it's quite important to mention that Peter Green, in his blues soloing, which is what we're going to focus on mostly, would uh, only ever use both pickups on. So switch in the middle position or the neck position. You very rarely switch to the bridge, and uh, I've got a couple of examples that I'm going to show you at the end of the video uh, after I've done the teaching bit, just to show you kind of like you know how much you would switch your selector switch and mess around with his volume control and all that kind of stuff. But um, we're going to focus on kind of the neck pickup and that out of phase tone he got, and uh, I have done that to this Les Paul to my little Epiphone. So you get. sound again I'll talk about the Peter Green mod at the end of the video as well in in brief I'm, I'll, I'll talk about it massively in another video I'll do uh, possibly um, in about two weeks or so so uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll basically cover in every aspect of Peter Green but say back to tone so that's the kind of sound you're going for nice rich warm overdrive that just just sounds gorgeous <laughs> kind of go for that kind of on oh, a lot of reverb as well Peter used a lot a lot of reverb that's any slow blues stuff you can hear it resonating when he when he really dug in it just sounds brilliant so don't be afraid to crank reverb in don't go too overboard with distortion you want it clean and really warm sounding so you know not not so much uh, treble a lot more mids and a lot more bass kind of give it a vocal kind of quality yeah lay off the treble and lots of reverb, lots of mids, lots of bass, not as much gain. So uh, yeah, so hopefully that covers the whole idea of tone. So let's move on to uh, some quick playing examples of let's yeah of how to play out Mr. Green. Okay, so let's get going with the whole teaching business. Um, as I say, in this video, the first one, I'm going to focus on just basic, really quick kind of things to get you going. Uh, so you can go away and like you know plink around in your own time doing this. Uh, 
going to do things until that next video where I'll be talking about other things and whatnot and going into a bit, into a bit more detail. This is kind of like an introductory video, so to say. So, the first thing I want to teach is... Um, I'm going to call it the Peter Green scale. It's technically the top half of the pentatonic scale, but it's in a different position. So because it's in a different position, I'm going to call it the Peter Green scale, and I'm not going to get into the whole musical theory thing. I'll do that in, again, as I say, in the later videos. But at this point in time, it's called the Peter Green scale. And um, these notes will... You can play around with these notes, and they, it will just sound... It has that sound if you're not hopefully you know what I mean by that so um so yeah I'll, I'll, let's go on with the uh, Peter Green scale okay so the Peter Green scale this is it and I say out of all those notes I'm just going to take a strap off um you can use them a lot and again he very he would kind of uh use obviously normal pentatonics but you can combine it with this position this position is very important to play out Peter Green, and I'll, I'll get into explaining why in a minute. But uh, first off, let's learn the scale. So you want to start off on your D string on the 12th fret. So that's your first note. Then you go down to your G string, 10th fret. G string, 12th fret. B string, 10th uh, fret. B string, 11th fret. B string, 13th fret. Then you bend up the 13th fret on the B string, a whole tone. And then you move down to your high E string on the 11th fret, high E string, 13th fret, and then bend up the 13th fret, high E string. So, whole thing. One more time. Okay, so um, we're going to focus on the key of G minor. This is the key of G minor, so uh, if you've got blues in G minor, there's some great backing tracks on YouTube and all over the internet, so look for G minor, these will work, and uh, I'll, say I'll get into transposing the shape in later videos. So that's the, scale. that's the scale, and what you can do with that is you can do like classic Peter Green licks like... Which is just Peter Green and perfectly, and that one is you fret your 12th fret, on your, on your G string, and then you bend up your B string at the 13th fret, so it's that bend, it's that kind of lower half of a Peter Green scale. So you've actually start 13th fret, uh, 12th, set, 12th, 12th fret, sorry, on the G string, 13th fret, B string, bend up, and then release, pull off to the 11th, and then resolve back to the 12th fret on the uh, G string. And, and he would use that in a kind of really aggressive manner where, where the, the blues would be going to go around dum dum and you just hear him go and he does like really lean into it which again is very important but then he would do a, a contrast um, like the lick he would do. It would be a nice kind of, again, that was your volume four, then you roll volume back and he would do this one. So you can kind of piece those two together. Volume down. And it's really, it's night and day. And dynamics are very important in Peter Green's playing. Uh, really important. So, you know, be, be aware you will ride your volume control and pick a lot you know, here there and everywhere all the time so that next one was you start on your 10th fret G string and then you go to your 12th fret G string then you go down to your B string on the 11th fret and then back up to your 10th fret on your, B, on your G string and then finish it on the G string on the 12th fret so So they're really nice, and that one works, you know, you can have it full out. But he, 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 that one, he kind of like, he would do it quite a lot and it'd be very quiet. So that's another one. Uh, another one to do is... 
which is really nice. Again, B string, uh, 13th fret, turn the volume down. And then you bend up your 13th fret high E string. Kind of the same thing again, you pull off from the third, release the bend, pull off from the 13th to the 11th. Like that. So there's another, there's another nice little thing to do. Um, they're all over the place. I mean, as I say, that scale. Every note in there will work in like in the context of a blues. It's just really, I don't know, it just works really nicely. It's, it's kind of like great sound. And uh, that position is really important to learn to play out Peter Green because he would very he'd use it so much in like in slow blues. Like he would very rarely ex like come out of that box, that shape, because he didn't play a lot. And I say that's another important fact of Peter Green's playing is he would only play, he would play very sparingly, and that's something to remember when you do play. Think of it like, um, the best way to think of it, I reckon, would be to think think you're singing, and you sing a line, and then you play a line, and you'll sing a line that's a bit longer, and then you'll play. So if kind of like, you know, blues is going, and you go... Dun, 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 just wait for a bit, and then... And just do one note. You know, there's a couple of ideas there, so... Um, Hopefully, like, you know, that explains that, and so there's a couple of ideas there for you to be kind of going on with. Yeah. Let's talk about, uh, what can we talk about? Yeah, let's talk about just a couple of little fundamental things before we end the video. So, uh, let's move on. Okay, so, to end the video, uh, I just want to say thanks for watching, for a start, and I uh, hope you watch, uh, tune into the other videos that are going to come up soon. Um, as I say, I couldn't teach it all in one lesson, there's too much to learn, so I'm going to make a, a whole kind of a, a whole series of uh, episodes on half part Peter Green because it really will take uh, take a lot to do. So um, I hope you're going to, hope you're, you've enjoyed this first one. It's just an introductory one, so it's enough to kind of get you started and give a few kind of, you know, a bit of food for thought, so to say. But um, yeah, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk a bit more about kind of more kind of theory-based stuff, more scales you would use, positions you would use. Uh, that's what this next one's going to be about. More, I'm also going to talk about uh, the Peter Green pickup mod as well. Maybe that, that'll be a probably a later video because everyone kind of knows about it. But there's a few things kind of like I've discovered about my mod that I kind of want to talk about. Um, so uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll be around for that one. Um, so yeah, I mean, things to take away from this video really are just kind of focus on, focus on, uh, worried dream, uh, got a good mind to give up living, the Peter Green blues scale that I showed you, uh, a couple of those licks, and try and incorporate the, the, the kind of light and heavy picking, so to say, and, and, and get used to kind of like riding your volume control, and also kind of like get used to playing with not a great deal of gain, but kind of a very fat, warmish kind of sound, but again, at the same time, quite aggressive, so to say, but not as much treble, more mid, more bass kind of sound. So, um, so yeah, I mean, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again on the next one. And, um, yeah, there's a lot to learn about Mr. Peter Green, massive fan of Peter Green, so hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye.